Shabbat Shalom and welcome everybody. I hope that you are blessed today as you spend time with the Lord on Shabbat and with your family and delighting in the Shabbat, the rest. We work six days and we rest on the seventh day. So blessings and uh, good to see you. I want to give a shout out to those who are watching uh, on YouTube and on uh, BitChute. Uh, we're glad to have you with us and uh, it's uh, exciting to see that uh, the word is getting out and uh, around the world and that uh, you value it enough to spend time with us. If uh, you want to be notified, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and uh, let us know how uh, uh, that you appreciate the teachings. So uh, this, this morning, I want to talk a little bit about three basic things. One is the end times. Okay, and the other is uh, the resurrection of the dead, and then we're going to get into the rapture. We're going to touch on the rapture. And so, um, with that being said, there is just so much information right now that's going on. There is so much going on in the world as far as natural events. Uh, I believe that we are in the uh, ramp up to the end times. Uh, you know, it says in scripture that there'll be wars and rumors of wars, that there'll be earthquakes and, and floods. And, and we see that on a daily basis nowadays because social media is so fast, things just get out and uh, it, it doesn't, take, doesn't take any time at all to find out about goings on in other places in the world. So we're definitely in that time where the information is so accessible and uh, I think that the, the scripture kind of speaks to that, that it's, you know, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. It's, it's, it's just happening. And so uh, with that being said, I believe that we're in this ramp up time to the great tribulation, uh, birth pains or times of groanings, what you might call them. But even now there's some things going on with the mark of the beast. And, and uh, I'm sure there are those who would differ with me on their timing. But uh, I still believe that it's uh, not quite there yet. So I just wanted to say the blessings to you as we start this. And uh, as we go into this, uh, a little bit of teaching this morning. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the resurrection of the dead. And um, the resurrection of the dead is something that is a base fundamental Christian belief. And a lot of people uh, just don't understand that it didn't just come from the Christian theology. It actually, and I have a copy of the uh, Everyman's Talmud here that uh, I use is because it's fairly easy reference. It's in English, so I can read uh, it easily. And uh, it even talks about the resurrection of the dead in here. And now the resurrection of the dead was uh, basically believed in by the Pharisees. Uh, the Pharisees, uh, which their equivalent today would be the Orthodox uh, Jewish people, um, they believe in the resurrection of the dead. Now the, the Sadducees, which uh, also... Uh, uh, they did not believe in it. They believed that, that once you're done, you've gone through your life cycle, that's it. Your soul and spirit is done at that point. That there is no, there's nothing past here. So they're kind of the, the crowd that, you know, atheists don't believe in God. So they just, you know, this is all there is and there ain't no more. Um, you know, but some people like to believe in all kinds of stuff. They have a smorgasbord religion. And uh, they have, they, they have, you know, everything that they can find is a grab bag from the buffet table and they put it into it and that's their religion. But uh, this is, you know, it's even in Talmud that it's resurrection of the life. So there's no disagreement between uh, Jewish Pharisees and Christians on the resurrection. And we believe that Yeshua was raised from the dead. So with that, afterwards comes the rapture theology. Now, rapture theology started in the mid-19th century, and it was one guy, um, and I believe his name was Darby, 
Uh, I could be wrong. You know, your memory gets a little bit foggy after a while. But Darby came up with this theology and it's ascribed to him. And then people grab onto it and they start repeating it. And we have a lot of preachers and a lot of teachers that are like that today. They aren't, they aren't theologians. They, they aren't people that study scripture. They grab what somebody else teaches and they take it for their own and then they just repeat. So it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. And this rapture theology, I believe, is one of the theologies that's been repeated, repeated, repeated uh, many times. But I personally do not find it scriptural. I find some changing to our bodies, but I don't find us being taken off the earth. And so uh, there are those that get into the argument of pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, of when the Lord comes, it's 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 a it's a smorgasbord there of take take your belief where where you want to believe. I even had one friend told me he was a pan trib guy that he believes that as long as he believes in uh, uh, Jesus, that everything's just going to pan out okay. Which well, I kind of think that if you believe in in uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, then it's all going to pan out in the end. But talking about taught theologies. So we get into this rapture theology and a lot of people are teaching end times and the rapture. And I believe that it's, it's got people gripped with fear that it brings, it brings you uh, 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 to a place where you're just hanging on in your, in your, in your belief, just long enough to get out of here that you're waiting at the rapture bus stop and the cars are going by and you're just waiting until that clock ticks over to catch your next the rapture bus. And I just don't personally find that in scripture. Um, what I do find and where they base, these teachers have based their theology for rapture is in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, 4 is the chapter 4 and it starts with chapter 13. But these, this is a book that is attributed that they believe that all main scholars believe that Paul wrote this book, 1 Thessalonians. They're not so sure about 2 Thessalonians. Uh, there are seven that they believe that Paul authored for sure, that they're pretty positive that Paul did. Okay, but you get the book of Hebrews, they don't know for sure. So there's 13 books overall, roughly a little over half. They, they can attribute to Paul with certainty, modern scholars, okay? So that gives us a preface. So here we are, we're 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I want to read this scripture to you because I, I believe that it's important to have understanding and that you have to be grounded in the word when you're sharing these things. So, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like those uh, like the rest of the men who have no hope. So what's the hope? We believe that Yeshua died and rose again. So we believe that Yehovah will bring with Yeshua those who have fallen asleep in him. So this is 1 Thessalonians and it's verse 13. And so it's talking about Yeshua being resurrected. Okay? So Yeshua was resurrected. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that you who are still alive, who will be left till the coming of the Lord. So the Lord is there and was there and he was resurrected and he ascended. Now they're waiting for a second return. So Paul's acknowledging the second coming of the Lord, that the Lord is going to come back. Okay. Well, if he's coming back, he's coming back to the earth. He's coming back here. Okay. And it says, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Yeshua will rise. Okay. First. They will rise first. So 
those that have passed away will be with the Lord first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. So it says them in the clouds. So that means all those have gone before us, those have passed, will be caught up in the clouds, okay? Together. So that means all of us in a group. To meet the Lord in the air. So the Lord is still in the air. So he isn't even to earth yet. The resurrection happens. People are going up, right? And so because it says he's in the air, so he's coming down. He's not coming anywhere else. It doesn't say he comes and gets us and goes back to heaven. It doesn't say that anywhere here. It says we'll be caught up to him together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then, it, and then it says, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Okay. So we're going to be with the Lord forever. Now, Revelation mirrors this. Now, you noticed I did say Revelation, okay? Lots of people say Revelations, but it's actually Revelation, one singular, Revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. So it's not a bunch of Revelations, it's one Revelation. And it reads in consecutive order as how it will happen as you go through. If you read Revelation, you'll discover that. Okay. So this is what they base the rapture theology off of. This scripture that we're caught up in the air. But he says he's coming down. Okay. Revelation also says that the Lord will come back on a white horse, right? Come back on a white horse with all the armies of heaven. That's all. That's not some. So all of those who are with him already will be coming down from heaven with the Lord on that day. He's going to come down to Jerusalem and set up his kingdom. Now, there are those of you, I'm sure, that believe that Israel doesn't matter. The Jewish people don't matter, but that's not true. Yeshua is coming down. He's going to establish his kingdom on that Temple Mount. That'll be the seat of his government. Jerusalem will be the, the capital city of his kingdom. So it does matter. It does matter to him. And so with that being said, scripturally, I cannot say that I find any basis for us going up with the Lord. We'll be with him forever. But I don't believe that it matters whether you're pre-trib or post-trib or mid-trib or no-trib. I believe that you have to understand what the scripture is saying in context. You can't take it out of context. He's talking, Paul is talking about the resurrection of the resurrection of the dead. Paul is talking about the uh, being caught up in the air. And he's, he definitely gives the direction that the Lord is coming. Because the Lord is coming to the earth. He's not going back to heaven. So that's why I don't believe in the rapture. Uh, I encourage you to read for yourself. And see where you stand at the end of reading it. And then, if you want to read Revelation, read it as it goes in chronological order. Don't take this scripture verse here and try to figure out whether it's pre-trib or post-trib. Read it in order. Because once you read it in order, you will understand. Let them that have eyes to see, and them that have ears to hear, hear and see. Shabbat Shalom, everybody.
Hope you have a blessed Shabbat and rest in the Lord. Shalom.